Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Dietmar Winska. I'm the CEO of Innomed Africa, and I welcome you to this webinar. And my topic then is about pain. And it is quite a revelation for me how many people are suffering chronic pain over and over and over for a long time, for many years. And uh, obviously, we can have pain in many places. But the most predominant ones are probably headaches and migraine and joint pains and muscle pains and back pains and tendons or whatever else there is. Anything where there are nerve endings in our body can experience pain. And it is specifically people who've got a lot of uh, pain in their joints, which seem to be able to get any relief, except temporary. Back and neck pains are so common that I'm surprised as a non-medical person that so little can be done about these things. And very often, when we are treating pain, it seems to be only symptomatic. It doesn't seem to go to the cause of the pain. And I do recognize that that is extremely difficult to find the cause of a particular pain, especially when it comes to back pain and neck pains, because there are things like stress um, and other causality factors that can start off this terrible problem. But if we look at pain in joints, that is from your shoulders to your elbows, to your hands, to your knees, to your ankles, in the hips, it can really be just about in any joint. And what are the causes of these? Or at least, no, that's not the right word, but the descriptions of some of these pains. Um, there is, for example, rheumatism, and it's terrible cousin, I think it's called um, rheumatic arthritis or arthritic rheumatism. Not sure which way around, but it doesn't matter. There is a lot of pain. And arthritis is especially bad when the cartilage has disappeared. The cartilage that is the uh, between the two bone endings, uh, like we would be able to see over here, this is a normal joint, and in this place, there is very little uh, cartilage at all. And, of course, when there is nothing, it is very difficult to get that uh, cartilage back. One other point that I just want to mention here, um, cartilage does not have many blood vessels. So to get the essential, as we will see a, a moment later, or some of you who know the BEMA very well, um, to get essential oxygen and nutrients and other substances to the cartilage cells, um, the whole blood circulation has to work well. But when there is nothing left, then of course it cannot really be fixed other than surgically possibly, or with an artificial knee or hip or whatever. Uh, when it comes to back pain, the little bit that I have seen is there is such a variety of back pains and it is seldom easy to determine where the cause of these back pains are. And so what happens is that often there are unnecessary back operations that have to be undergone and when the operation is sorted out and done, the pain is still there. In fact, we have a hotline doctor here in South Africa who says that Pretoria is the capital, the world capital of unnecessary back operations. And I have actually read that in quite a bit of literature already. Some German, some American, some British, some South African literature, where the consensus seems to me that back operations are very often and very quickly done, but the diagnosis is rarely um, unique, uniquely determined 
in terms of the cause. Of course, bones break occasionally, and uh, even or maybe especially on young people who do extreme sports or are very athletic. And the big thing then, of course, is to set the bones again so that they grow together properly. And then, of course, they have to grow together properly. And for that, we also need blood circulation. We need nutrients. We need um, these uh, bone cells to fuse together. We have uh, to have osteoblasts, the type of cells that will make this bone fracture stronger than before. And it has, by the way, been shown many, many years ago that a very weak electromagnetic field applied to a fracture will accelerate the healing of the bone. In other words, the growing of the bone. And the blood supply in bones, just like cartilage, is of course very, very difficult because there are so few blood vessels in the bone itself. And yet, for a living cell, and bone cells are living cells, we also require oxygen, we also require nutrients, we also require the removal of metabolic waste products at the cell's level, and that is what the blood vessels are there for. And yet, in bones, it is quite a difficult uh, job to do. And we've got some practical examples where, you know, when you have a heart bypass operation, then they cut the sternum open lengthwise. And when that is done, and the job is done, the operation is done, it gets clamped together, or stitched together, or wired together, and it would grow together again in a couple of weeks' time. And here is an example where after 15 months of unsuccessful conventional therapy, and that is over a year, take note, after one month of Bema, it had already fused quite well, and after three months, it had been as solid as what could be expected in the cartilage and better. This other ailment that gives a lot of pain to people is osteoporosis. And uh, that is simply the almost leaching out of the bone, where the bone matrix becomes uh, much lighter, and hence the bone becomes much more fragile and brittle. And so it often breaks, even on a small fall. And in elderly people, that often means that you are now confined to a wheelchair or at best to crutches. And of course, we can get a lot of pain in many other ways, many, many other ways. And I'm not qualified even to list them all. But what I can pick up uh, from the medical profession is that it is an extremely difficult process to determine the cause of a pain. And there are pain clinics in Germany, there are pain clinics in South Africa. I have spoken to specific doctors in Germany on pain. And they assemble a group of experts from different disciplines, medical disciplines together, to try and analyze where the pain comes from. Because if we have open wounds, like this one on the bottom left, or at the top left, or we have a heat blister or a burn blister, like the one on the right, or even something like an oral ulcer, these things cause pain, and, and some of it is worse than others. And uh, again, it is very difficult. And so we have a lot of reasons why people can experience, let me say and call it discomfort. And of course, it includes acute things like arthritis, rheumatism, muscular pain, migraines, but even things like tinnitus sleeplessness, prolonged sleeplessness, diabetes. Those things can also, over a long time, when they are chronic, uh, produce a lot of emotional pain. And that is, of course, something that is, again, very difficult to treat. 
Sport injuries can be extremely excessive. If you look at that poor guy there with his number 157 on his chest, that leg is really in a, the most awkward position and most likely badly broken. Now those are just pictures and the pictures are not, they do not have anything to do with Bema per se. These are not Bema pictures before and after, but they are just there to illustrate that there is a big variety of pains that we can have, of which those appearing in the joints, appearing in our backs, appearing um, from burn wounds and other non-healing wounds, gives us a lot of discomfort. And now the question is, are these things preventable? Is there an answer for alleviating the cause of pain? Well, there are, of course, medicines. There are drugs that uh, relieve pain, and we are grateful that there are things like that. But, of course, a drug will always have a side effect. And if you have a pain that can only be kept under control symptomatically, but we cannot solve it because we do not know the cause of it, then this becomes a pretty lousy spiral of getting more and more chemical um, stuff into our bodies, which the body doesn't really want, but it relieves the pain. So that's a good thing. And I can sympathize with people who have a lot of pain and are grateful if there is some or other drug that they can take to take the pain away. But when it comes to that, the question arises that I've asked very often actually in these webinars and also in the seminars, is that what healthcare is all about or is that the management of a sickness? Because if we are just taking pills to subdue the symptoms of pain, as grateful as those who suffer from that will be, it is still sickness management. It is not health care. Health care should find out exactly where the pain comes from, or even better, prevent the pain from happening in the first place. Now, when I listen to what is being said about these things, in the medical world, then, well, joints wear out, you know, like the bearing on your car, front wheel. Bones lose their strength, like steel girders that rust. And pain, well, pain is just the sensation that we have when these things happen. And you know what? It's a biological process. It's part of getting old. Get used to it. Take this pill and make the best of it. Well, I cannot agree that that is really the answer. That is like saying when we have a problem in a car, in a Boeing, in a laptop, that, well, as the thing gets older, that's just what happens. And uh, never mind all the pain, just carry on. But you won't be able to do your work anymore. The Boeing won't fly, the laptop won't compute, and the car, the car won't go where you want it to go. Now, many of these painful conditions come from chronic ailments, as we said already. And the interesting thing is what has been discovered over the last 20 years, that these chronic ailments are symptomatic of poor microcirculation. And I will say a word or two about microcirculation later. But if you look at this list of things on here, asthma, blood pressure, uh, Parkinson, Alzheimer, back pain, depression, arthritis, rheumatism, diabetes, etc. Um, then we see there are no, apparently, no real answers to this, other than it's part of the biological process. Just take these pills and make the best of it. You're getting old. Face it. Well, that's not quite enough. Because we have reached a point in time where we don't have to be with our good health, vitality, and quality of life. And that includes being pain-free, if not all the time, then most of the time, or even better still, we find out what the cause of all these pains are. 
And I do recognize it's not as easy as a mechanical gadget like a car, a Boeing, or a laptop. I understand that. And still, the causes can be found and should be found. Maybe that doesn't make good financial sense, but I think they must be found. Now, we in the Bema family believe that maintaining our good health should always be a priority. And I'm sure you all agree. Don't have a problem with that one. Because without good health, we are impaired in our performance. We can't really do what we're meant to do every single day. Another thing is that poor health is a financial burden. It often has extremely serious and grave consequences. And poor health, and especially chronic pain, really destroys quality of life. It robs us of a sense of achievement and wrecks relationships because there is so much emotional pain going with that, especially if it's been carrying on for years or decades. Long-term ailments, in fact, in fact, pain of any time, can lead very often to depression. I've met a lot of people in this work of Bema in the last 13 years who were quite happy, normal, functioning, driven people who suffered from some or other chronic pain of any type and nobody can help them other than pills. Well, there are many ways, of course, to maintain good health. Lifestyle has a lot to do with it. Having good sleep, good nutrition, less stress, Breathing habits, drinking water, laughing, believe it or not, it's imp important. Supplements and fresh food, no smoking, avoid overeating, walking a little bit every day. It's actually about sensible living. And that's it. And then I won't have pain anymore. Will that make a difference? Not on its own, but it is a big contributing factor. But we'll get deeper into this. Of course, we are all very busy. We are chased every single day. We're in this rat race. And we are stressed. We exist on very poor diets, which sometimes are even dangerous in the long term. We get sleep, which is tossing and turning about. It's too short. And we already get up exhausted when we should have been rested. We do not take sabbaticals often enough. Sabbaticals don't mean we have to take three weeks off. It can mean taking a weekend off and making it really a weekend off. And the result of all these things is usually that we have a lack of energy and uh, many of you can probably identify with that. And then something has to give. Make sure it's not your health. Okay, can I give you something practical? Yes, I will. But before I do that, what is the biggest medical care problem today in the Western world? Chronic ailments are not only on the increase, more and more people suffer from them, but chronic illnesses start at a younger and younger age. This younger age, the start of age-related chronic ailments, has now already reached the 37 to 39-year-olds, at least in this country. And sadly, in the elderly, many elderly suffer from multimorbidity. In other words, more than one chronic ailment simultaneously. And that causes emotional problems and pain of its own. Not just the chronic ailment pain, but the emotional problems give pain because Nobody believes them that they actually have these pains or they say it's part of getting older. Get with it. It's an emotional problem. And now the circle or the vortex is really going down. So how can we maintain good health? Well, I don't know what the perfect answer is, but what I certainly know is that the next new pill is not going to be the answer. So can we beat sickness with drugs and medicine alone? Certainly not, but there are lifestyle choices that we can take. 
Are medical practitioners the only answer? Well, I would say today, no. For diagnosis, I say they're most definitely, but if you believe the literature and if you read the very latest Newsweek, issue September the 24th, I would actually recommend it to you. It's a shocking indictment on diagnosis. I read a similar story in the Spiegel magazine, which is a German type of time magazine, and diagnosis is most often wrong. But I'm not here to, to blame doctors or anything. I'm just saying, are medical practitioners the only answer? And the answer is no longer, because there are other choices in modern emerging medicine. There are alternatives, and by alternatives, I don't mean uh, wiggling your hands and hugging trees. By that, I mean there are alternatives, and only one of them is the Bema. It's not the answer, but it is an answer, and that is important. Can we expect more from alternative medicine? Well, yes and no. There are certain things that uh, have proven to work, even if it is just um, anecdotally, but that uh, holds as much in an alternative practice as in a real medical practice. And I put real in inverted commas here. So we have to look at everything today. And yes, by all means, be skeptical. We have to be very skeptical, in fact. But every now and then, there is a totally unexpected breakthrough. And that breakthrough usually comes from a different uh, discipline, from another corner, as I called it here. And the Bema is one of those. Now, what makes the Bema different? Actually, it's a very, very small but critical parameter. It is quantifiable. Everything the Bema claims to be able to do is quantifiable. That means it can be measured, it can be repeated, the experiment can be repeated on a thousand other people and we get the same answer. And the answer will be consistent. If on top of that it is safe and it seems to work very well, then we're on to something or we are busy with a massive fraud. But scientific means it shouldn't be driven by fraud. Scientific means it is quantifiable, anyone can measure it, anyone can repeat the experiment, and we will always get the same answer. And that is what the Bema certainly is. And how does it do that? Well, it certainly, in case there is someone listening, especially in the US maybe, that says, whoa, 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 that shows you that it is fraudulent or at least uh, a bit tricky here. Let me say right away, the Bema device heals nothing, and I say that emphatically. It does not the healing. The Bema is not healing anything. The Bema is improving certain parameters, and these parameters are quantifiable. The results are um, consistent, and that is what we want. Because the basics of a human being and many other animals, well, I would say all animals in, on this planet, is that our organisms are largely self-regulating. And by self-regulating, we mean that the core temperature and the surface temperature, the skin temperature, the blood pressure, the cholesterol levels, and so on, are autonomously regulated by the body itself. It does that in a very smart way. It is probably run from the brain. It's a neurological thing. But there are many, many centers in the body that make a contribution, be it to cholesterol levels, be it to um, acidity levels in the urine, be it to temperature, be it to blood pressure. It's also a very networked body, this body of ours, in that you cannot look at one thing on its own. Just as in a motor car, if you have an electrical problem on the radio, you have to look at everything that is electrical in the car and possibly even other factors. And there are interactions between various subsystems and in an organism that is no different. It's networked. So you cannot have only highly specialized perspectives 
on pain, for example, and an ear, nose, and throat specialist will tell you about the symptoms of this pain that you have, um, give you a different diagnosis than the person who is a cardiologist or nephrologist or a pulmonologist or whatever. And of course, the body is a fantastic optimizing system in that it is trying to keep us in top shape and top fit. For what? For life, for living, for having energy, for performance, vitality. And of course, when we can do all those things that we would like to do, we've got quality of life. And then, of course, the most amazing basic or fundamental aspect of the human body is it is self-healing. And by having said self-regulating, networked, optimized, and self-healing, we already have excluded the possibility that the Bema heals anything. And I hope you see that very clearly. The body is self-healing. At best, the changing in certain parameters by whatever modality can enhance the body's ability to solve its problem, be it pain or a wound that doesn't want to heal, or something else. But it is the human organism that is self-healing. But the complexity is at biomolecular and cellular level, and we're not going to go into this tonight. However, it is important to recognize that medical science only became a real science once the uh, complexity and the interactions at molecular and cellular level were recognized. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not very long. That is maybe 50 years. Since the discovery of the human uh, genome and the DNA and, and figuring out exactly what's going on there, um, biology and medicine as well has become an exact science. But the exactness of that science is at the cellular and biomolecular level. It is not at the level of the thermometer and the blood pressure gauge. And to do all these things, the body needs energy. And the energy, of course, it gets uh, through a very, very smart and complex biochemical process in the mitochondria, in each cell, where it converts glucose or let's say nutrition, nu uh, nutrients rather, and oxygen, and it converts it into a chemical called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And the point of all this is just that we need this energy to stay alive. We need this energy to keep our cells functioning exactly according to program. And when all the cells are functioning according to program, we will not have any pain. If we do burn ourselves, that's different. Then, of course, we need a lot of energy in all the cells so that they do their chemistry, and we need a good blood circulation so that the wound can heal as quickly as possible, and we will have as little pain as possible. If we contract shingles for whatever reason, then, of course, it is important to alleviate the pain of shingles as quickly as possible. And again, we need a lot of ATP in the body to be able to do that. Because it is the body, remember, that is self-healing. And it has the self-regulation ability to get all the building materials, the um, alleviating pain materials, if I can call them so med non-medically, to the right spots, and then it will work. We require energy, and this energy at cellular level is actually very easy to generate in principle. It is not at all easy when you look at the detail how that is done. In fact, I don't think biology knows 100% yet how that is done. There are still a lot of uncertainties about that. But what is certain today is that we require oxygen, nutrients, water, we require a mechanism to remove the waste of the metabolism. And for that, for those steps, for those three steps, we require an effective blood circulation. 
The blood circulation will take the oxygen and the nutrients to the cell and the waste will be removed by the blood circulation system. And it's always been like that and it still is like that. But we also require an alert immune system. And that immune system swims along in the blood circulation system. It is, of course, a much more complex system than that. But its transportation is very much dependent on effective blood circulation. And we require an effective and efficient immune system so that we are protected to virus from the outside, bacteria from the outside, even uh, fungi, and also interesting, any malfunctioning cells. Because a malfunctioning cell can develop into a tumor cell, which can become a tumor of sorts or a bigger tumor later. So all these things seem very simple. In principle, they are, but so is the jet engine. But it's only in principle very simple. It is extremely profound once you get into the detail. Now, how can we help our body to get this energy so that we can live better? Well, we need an intact blood circulation system. And as I indicated already, the supply and waste removal highway of the body, that is what this blood circulation system is all about. It's like the interstate in the US and the highways over here. It is the highway for the immune system and all sorts of materials that float around in the blood and get transported to the places where they're needed. And what is really required is good interconnectivity, as I put it. That's also not a very medical term, I know. But it is a proper diffusion of blood in all the organs uh, of the body, in all tissue in the bones, in the tendons, in the brain, in the muscle, in the kidneys, in the lungs, everywhere. And there you see that the blood circulation has a, has a specific significance. If blood circulation is failing, we have a medical word for that, and that means you're dead or you're going to be dead. So blood circulation is extremely important. And here is another thing that is so interesting. About three quarters of all blood vessels in the human body are part of what is called the microcirculation. The microcirculation is any diameter pipe, blood vessel I'm talking about, that is smaller than a fifth of a millimeter. Now, a millimeter is pretty small. So, arteries is about 11%, veins about 14%, but the microvessels, is about three quarter of all the blood vessels and they go right down to about five to seven thousandths of a millimeter here it is just for those of you especially if there are listeners now in the united states um, that work in inches an inch uh, goes to about here from zero to 25 millimeters that's about an inch and a one millimeter would then be a 25th of an inch. And if you take one of those, then from 0.2 of a millimeter down to 6,000th of a millimeter is the microcirculation. So of all the piping in your blood vessel system, most of the stuff is happening at that very small diameter. And if we are looking at capillaries, or capillaries as you say there in the States, then if you take the ball of a ballpoint pen, that's about a cubic millimeter, you've got enough space there from three to 5,000 capillaries in there. So to stimulate the blood circulation at that level is extremely important because it is there where the exchange of the important um, chemicals uh, takes place the oxygen and the nutrients together combining or being machined rather in this rotary engine uh, where the ATP is generated in the mitochondria, it, it happens at that very, very low level. And the chemistry itself, as I tried to show you in these few little block diagrams earlier on, is extremely tricky. It has to be 
precise. It cannot work roughly. It cannot even work at 99,99999% accuracy. It's got to be 100,000%. Otherwise, we will pick up problems. Now, what does that all have to do with pain? Well, the pain is just a signal by the body that something is wrong. And something is wrong when the circulation isn't working, and in particular, the microcirculation isn't working, because then you will not have enough ATP to let the body develop its self-regulating and self-healing ability. Is it that simple? In principle, yes. In its detail, much more complex? Of course. I'm not trying to um, just talk over that. But it is, in effect, at the highest level, as easy as lying down on a mat, switching on a machine, this machine being the Bema, and when you have done that for 8 to 30 minutes in the morning and in the evening, and that can, the details can be explained by the respective BBPs, if there are non-BEMA users uh, listening. There are no negative side effects. It's excellent for home treatment. It's easy to use. You cannot overdo it. Um, and you cannot um, get a resistance to it. It is something the body wants as a trigger, as a stimulant. But it is a stimulant not to stimulate the body, but to stimulate the natural action of the body's blood circulation, hence ATP production, hence self-regulating mechanisms, hence self-healing ability. And that includes pain. So at the Institute of Microcirculation, there are some very dramatic clips that I cannot really show now. But before Bema, we have a very sluggish blood circulation. And uh, suffice to say that after two minutes of Bema already, You've got a significantly different microcirculation. But here's the deal. Only in those areas of the body where the body wants to improve the microcirculation. Because if you were to improve the microcirculation in every part of the body simultaneously, we wouldn't have enough blood in this body of ours. We only carry six to eight liters of blood. But if all the microvessels would be open if all the arteries and all and every bit of blood vessel would be open you would probably get about 20 liters in there or so i am told by the medical guys but there's more happening here when you are on the bema closed capillaries open already after two minutes why is that significant because in the capillaries that is where the exchange of the oxygen and nutrients is done, ATP is produced, and the chemical or the cellular waste uh, material um, is transported away again on the other side, on the venal system. But something else is happening. The immune system is completely dependent on good blood circulation because the white blood particles that sit in your, um, uh, I think it's called the thymus or, or some other, let's call it the lymph nodes, in, in small um, sort of pockets, it gets released into the bloodstream. And these white blood particles are actually running around in the bloodstream, chemically sniffing out the faulty cell, the virus, the bacteria, or whatever it is, the immune system must pick up something that is abnormal that shouldn't be there. And after BEMA application, surprise, surprise. We have not artificially improved the white blood cells, but the white blood cells that are sitting in the lymph nodes and do not patrol the highways and look for evil and rogue elements, they now get out like a lot of traffic cops or sheriffs that are out on the road. And the more police presence you have in a big city on the streets, the less crime you will have. It's a bit similar to that. Maybe a bit of a stretch. Medical people might not like it when I say it like that, but that is uh, understandable for everybody I trust. And another little thing there is that we improve the adhesion on the blood vessel wall of these white blood particles. 
And that's significant because for these white blood particles to work properly, they have to roll along the inside of the blood vessel. So what does this all mean? What does this all mean? These are the sort of two Bema uh, machines that we have for human beings, the Bema Professional on the left and the Bema Classic on the right. Um, they both work extremely well. The advantage of the Bema Professional is, of course, you can have two separate people on totally separate programs. It's ideal for couples uh, that have a double bed and you have a... Um, you you have uh, uh, what is it a body mat on each side, um, which of course you can do on the other side on the Bema Classic as well, but uh, but find out more about that from your um, Bema agent. Point is they're both there, and they're both excellent. In fact, they won a design award. What does the Bema do? I've said it a few times in the last couple of minutes. To get the self-healing effect, we need to stimulate the microcirculation so that we can improve essential supply and removal mechanisms for cells. And when that is done, then we have a much better chance of improved energy production and greater biological effectiveness. In other words, the ATP production and the biology, the chemistry inside the cell is working exactly as it should. And when this happens in all the organs and in all the tissue in our body, then we have a properly functioning regulation process. But that means when there's pain due to some symptom, then the body is able to self-regulate the imbalance and the self-healing will start. Again, this little diagram sounds very simple, and it is very simple. But if you really want to understand the details, it is extremely complex. But I'm not um, trying to avoid the complexity. The, the complexity is there. But there's a lot of complexity in a cell phone, and millions of people use it every day because they know it is very simple to push, push a couple of buttons, and then you are connected with any person on this planet. So you can sometimes explain something very simply and use it very simply while what is really happening in the background is very profound. And I want you to understand that. And these are the things that the Behemoth does. It improves the vasomotion, which is the dilation and contraction of the blood vessels. It opens the capillaries. And so the blood flow is, is more effective. Um, there aren't many blockages on the way back because the back stream of the blood back to the lungs, back to the heart is improved. More oxygen gets extracted as a result. And when that happens, of course, you have more oxygen available together with nutrients to produce ATP. And that's exactly what we see. And if you look at the list of numbers on the left, that is on the new redesigned Bema Classic and Bema Professional. And the green figures on the right were as they were on the Bema 3000. And the Bema 3000 is an excellent machine or medical device in most parts of the world except the United States. Sorry, guys. Um, but it is registered as a medical device in Europe, in South Africa, and used to be in Australia and other countries as well. But you can see the, the values were slightly lower. And that was due to the research and tweaking of some parameters that were done by a Dr. Klopp, a medical doctor at the Institute for Microcirculation attached to the Charité University Clinic of Berlin. And so we get significant improvements in vasomotion, open capillaries, in the backstream, in the oxygen extraction, and in ATP production. And those five parameters are by no means the only ones that improve, but those are the ones we can measure very clearly. We can measure it, and thus we can repeat the experiment on any person, and we will get very similar results within a percentage, a small percentage of error for any experiment. And medical practitioners have used it, and they get excellent results. If we look at 2031 documented ailment conditions, 65% were complaint free already after six weeks, 23% improved, and 12% unchanged. 
And if people use the BEMA for long term, then a lot of these things go away. It's almost 80-20. Look at this. 78% after one year are complaint-free and 14% improved and only 8% unchanged. And those were significant results because these are not ailment-specific. There are 2,031 documented ailment conditions. Does this constitute a clinical trial? No, by no means. Because in a way, BEMA doesn't need a clinical trial. It would be nice if we make a specific statement that the BEMA can alleviate macular degeneration or MS, multiple sclerosis, or diabetes 2. Then, of course, if we make such a claim, we should have some real uh, trials to substantiate that that is in fact true. But what we are saying in general, and there are about 45,000 diseases that can befall you and me, is if you have a particular ailment, it doesn't have to be forever the chronic ailment. It's not just a matter of getting old. It is lifestyle, yes, but the BEMA can alleviate a lot. Why? Because it enhances the self-regulation and self-healing ability of the body. And here is a here is a great graph. It's a it's a very small thing, but if we're just looking at the uh, bottom two curves, then we see we have the medication at the lowest line and the medication plus some physical therapy. A physical therapy, maybe like physiotherapy or something like that. Then we take the Beamer therapy on its own, and we see we've got this triangular. Um, um, BEMA application, and you can already see the BEMA on its own, according to this particular test that was done, is already better than the particular medication that they had there. And it was all about an improvement of the immune system. So the BEMA is almost, not almost, it is on this particular graph, according to this graph, according to this curve, a much better deal to improve the immune system than the medication that was used as control A and B. But here's the interesting thing. If you use the BEMA plus that medication, look at the jump we're making, another jump. We're improving the immune system by 25% after 30 to 40 days. That is significant. It is very significant. It is significant for the immune system as indeed it is significant for pain. It is indeed significant for the deterioration of joints. It is significant for combating arthritis, rheumatism, migraines and headaches. It is significant for all these things, not because it treats them specifically, but because the body is undergoing a certain process, the process of stimulation, where the body decides which part of the blood circulation has to be stimulated, and by the way, that is different at night, even to the daytime. And when the body can do that, you have a much bigger chance of being pain-free. You have a much better chance of having healing wounds heal, uh, 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 chronically non-healing wounds healing fast. You have a much better chance not to have osteoporosis, not because we're treating the osteoporosis. But a pulsating, a weak pulsating DC magnetic field will improve the growth of osteoblasts. And we have seen it over and over again. A consequence of that is better bone density. The economy and brilliance of the design of our bodies is awesome. And it is amazing that you and I consists of 10 to the power 14, that's about 100 million, million cells that work in harmony. And all they really require is oxygen, nutrients, and waste products removal, and that is done by the blood circulation. And the result is excellent cellular functioning, effective immune system, and self-regulation. Guys, it can't be much easier than that, the principle of it. Again, don't misunderstand me, the principle. <clears throat> And yet, lifestyle has a lot to do with it, because these, these things, oxygen, nutrients, waste products, and blood circulation, are directly affected 
by our lifestyles. And I'm as big a sinner as the next guy when it comes to things like that. And the reason is that I'm still blessed by good health. And uh, I'm 63, by the way. Um, I have no aches or pains whatsoever. And yes, I'm grateful for that and blessed by that. However, I think a lot of it has to do with lifestyle, which is more due to my wife than myself. But a significant effect is for the last 13 years, since I'm 50, I'm on the beamer. And I wouldn't say it shows, but I can feel it. And it's for everybody, you know. It doesn't matter if it is a baby, if it is an infant, if it is a toddler, if it is a teenager, if it is the active, or the middle-aged, or the old-aged. Everyone can benefit from this. And it works even on animals. And animals are, I should think, placebo-proof. I may be able to talk something into your heads, and you may be able to talk something into my heads, but you cannot do that with a horse. So, beamer therapy is really for everybody. For those who don't have pain, for those who don't have bone problems, for those people who don't have arthritis, rheumatism, and stuff like that, it still works because it improves your mental and physical performance. Um, it will increase your well-being, vitality, and joy of life. You will have your health much longer. Um, you will feel younger. Don't misunderstand me. You will still get older. You can't lie with a calendar and with a clock. Uh, so we are getting older. But if our immune system, if our self-regulation system, if our self-healing system is working better, then in effect, you are staying younger. It certainly is the most cost-effective means of preventing sickness, of staying healthy and improving our body's self-regulation ability. Beamer therapy for the sick is all, um, um, is, is, is most definitely a winner. Because look at this photo. It's not a Beamer photo. This, what, what is impressive about this photo is that all this machinery can keep a patient alive, possibly better than without, and giving them quality of life in a way. That's very relative. But all this technology might not take away the pain. And if it takes away the pain, it might just block the pain. There are lots of gadgets on the market that block the pain. But if we can get the Bema therapy applied to the ailing we will support their self-regulating parameters, and that is the body, the organism self-regulating parameters, and those will be the ones that improve the self-healing. And let's face it, that's what every hospital would like to do or should do. Improved microcirculation and oxygen supply, that will counter much of the ailment caused acidity, which is a big problem of pain as well. Observe accelerated healing effects, and who doesn't want that? Improve the immune system. Who doesn't want that? No negative side effects. That's better than any headache pill. And compatible with every other medical therapy, including the headache pill. Why is it compatible? Because now with the effective blood circulation, the effective ingredient of this pill is actually getting to where it's needed. And the doses can be reduced considerably and it'll already work because you have a good blood circulation. And of course, people who are super fit, the youngsters, the athletes, the marathon runners, the um, yeah, uh, adventure sport guys. Increased performance, faster regeneration and healing, energy saving warm up, prevention of sports injury because you're fitter, reduction of recovery time after injury that holds for everybody, but especially so for athletes. And it's approved by the International Olympic Committee since 2004. And, and there are people who say, ah, I've been on this BMI, I didn't feel anything. They've used it maybe two or three times. You know, they don't see this, this um, magnificent, miraculous uh, turnaround in their lives. And so they say, ah, it doesn't work. That's not true. Every time you use the BMI, there is an improvement in your microcirculation, in your ATP production, and even in the ability of your body to self-regulate and self-heal. It doesn't matter if you feel it or not. That's very subjective. 
because it will always improve the microcirculation, the oxygenation, the ATP production, and the self-regulation. That's all. And the result is, as we've said before, physical and mental performance, vitality, quality of life, and good health. And the success rate of BEMA is subject to for how long do you use it. So if you have very strong pains, um, of course, the causes um, are hidden in the self-regulation mechanisms and the percentage of improvement focus on the orange bars here, that duration of treatment for how long are you doing it already. And you see that these orange bars of free of the complaint go on and on and they increase. While the people who say my problem doesn't want to go away become less and less and less, as you can see here, the gray ones and the white ones are the improved. The improved um, goes up, 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 and then it becomes less and less because the percentage of those, uh, uh, it just becomes much smaller. So the orange one is the important one and the gray one, really. And that is really all I wanted to say tonight. But one thing's for sure, our health is priceless. Our health is also our responsibility. It's not the doctors, it's not the hospitals, it's not the pharmaceutical uh, companies. It is our responsibility. And our health can be regained, maintained by natural means, because of lifestyle. And today, because we have a breakthrough from an unexpected corner, we have a medical device which is quite new, based on an old technology which was revisited and um, retweaked, if I can put it like that. And this is what we can do for ourselves. So take charge of your health. Take charge of it. Do something. And if you're in the BEMA business, then promote it, promote it, promote it. Because one thing is for sure. We are now 30 years down the road from the first sort of home computers in a home. And look what happened. Look what happened. Nobody would have believed 40 years ago that a computer in every home would be as common as um, having running water and electricity in a home. It is here and it'll stay here. And I am convinced I am convinced because of the merit of the BEMA itself, nothing else, not marketing, not um, this webinar or any other webinar or seminar, but simply because of what the BEMA is, it will be in every home one day. And it won't be that far into the future. So remember, we at BEMA are as passionate about your health as hopefully you are. The BEMA has no real competitors. And even in America, you know, where one has to be careful what one says because there's always a lawyer in the bush somewhere, but um, the BEMA has no real competitors. It has admirers. Because it is interesting that if you Google BEMA, you get silly websites that say, don't buy a BEMA, or before you buy a BEMA, read this. And then they... Um, regurgitate absolute rubbish on their, e on, on their websites. And you know what? They only, they only challenge the BEMA. And you know why? Because it's the only device in this type of application that actually works. And we know why it works. And it as is registered in most civilized countries um, as a medical device. And that is why it is so successful. Is it more than a better mousetrap? For sure. First of all, it's not a mousetrap, but it is a revolutionary concept in real, easy, safe to use, home-based healthcare. What more do you want? But it requires a paradigm shift. We have to think a little bit differently about these things. It is like when in the past, people had to um, call the operator for a connection from A to B, and today a telephone isn't in a location. A telephone is a personal gadget. It's personal. It is with you. It's revolutionary in that sense. And just as successful the Beamer will be.